Astro 3.0 is out. And one of the big new features is Astro's image optimization. Now in practice, what it means is you can take an image that's more than 350 kilobytes and reduce it down to seven kilobytes by just switching out one item. Now, Astro gives you two things to accomplish this. One is an image component that you can use in the body of a document that takes in a lot of the same things that you can pass to an HTML image tag. However, it will optimize that image, even compress it and minimize it, and then it will add some attributes to that tag so that it's smarter as it loads on the page. The other thing it gives you is a get image function that can take in a lot of the same different attributes, but it returns to you in kind of a more function server side way. In fact, you have to run that on the server, either in the front matter of an Astro file or some JavaScript or TypeScript file. Now, I do wish I had a little better support for responsive images out of the box. They are working on that. So if you stick around to the end of the video though, I'm gonna show you how to use that get image function to roll your own and I'll give you that code at the very end. You ready? All right, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so let's jump in getting Astro to optimize our images. We're gonna follow along with the image documentation, which I'll link below. But the first thing it points out is the difference between the source directory and the public directory. Now here you'll notice I'm referencing an image relative to the root of my site. And that's because this image lives in my public directory. Now, it's important to note that Astro will not optimize images in the public directory. By default, these are static images, static files, so it won't touch it on build. So if we want Astro to do something, we need to put it inside of the source directory. And Astro actually recommends that we add a folder called assets. You don't have to put them in here, but they do need to be inside the source directory. So let me go ahead and drag this over. And as soon as I do this, it should break. And if I refresh, there you go, it does break because it can no longer find this image. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure that we're able to reference this. And if you're going to reference things in your source directory that Astro will touch, you need to first of all, import them in your Astro files. So just like a React component or other frameworks, you need to import ahead of time, and then you can use it down in the body. So here we'll say something like Astro image, and we'll import this from, and this is a relative path to assets, and then astro.png. Now all I have to do is come in here and grab this right here. And if I was just going to use a normal image tag, I would say astro image.src. Now it should pull back in here and it does. The only trouble is if I come in here and I inspect it and I come over to the network tab and refresh, you can see we've got 372 kilobytes. It's a PNG, so a pretty big image. So how can we get Astro to take it from this to an optimized image? Well, it's really, really easy. All you have to do is pull in the image like this from Astro Assets. And I've got the Astro extension, so it does that automatically. Then I just swap out this tag right here. And I need to do one other thing, which is just take off this .src. You can just pass it the entire import and it kind of figures out what it needs to do. Hey, Chris from the future here, as I was editing this, I meant to add one more thing. And that is if you're using PMPM, you do need to do one more thing. And that is you need to actually install Sharp, which is the image service that's used by Astro. Just PMPM add Sharp, and that should take care of it for you. If you have any other questions, you can check out the documentation or of course leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help. All right, back to the video. Now you'll notice over here, this is down to 25.8 kilobytes and now it's a WebP image. So it's converted it, it's minimized it. And if I come over here to the elements and I look inside here, you can see that I've actually got a bunch of extra stuff as well. So we've got the alt that's been passed along as well, which you do need with the image component. It's also given it a width and a height based on the actual image size and added the loading equals lazy and decoding async attributes to it. Those are more kind of modern performant ways of loading images. So really quick and easy, you don't have to do much at all. Now, of course, there is more to it than that. You can actually add additional things if you want to. So for instance, I can come in here and add a format and I can say I want this to be AVIF, all right, which is a even more modern format. If I come over here, let's see if we've gotten any smaller. Yeah, 7.4, and it looks like it's actually converted it to a different type as well. So it's really, really smart in how this works. Now, because it's basically a wrapper for the image element, you can add anything that you would add to an image element. So let's say you wanted like aria hidden or something like that equals true. Well, you can pass that along as well and it will just get dumped in right here. If I can get my dev tools out of the way to aria hidden equals true. So you can see it, it can receive any of those same exact items. You can also pass along a quality and this can take one of two forms. You can either pass away like low, high, max, or mid, or you can give it a value, a number value between zero and 100. So let's say I did something like 90 and that will basically compress it and kind of set it to that 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 quality now because pngs or jpegs or webps or all these different things have different values the way that they calculate quality they recommend just using like low high mid or max and i found that that works pretty well although you do have more fine-grained control if you want to pass in stuff specifically now if you want to know more about the kinds of things you could pass into images if i come down this way let's see 
Here we got alt required, width and height. You can provide those, although it does that here. The format, the quality, uh, there are additional properties as well. Anything you can pass along with the image tag. So all that is right here if you're interested in that. Now, you don't have to necessarily have Astro do all this work to get the benefit from it. So let's kind of revert back out of this and let's talk about two other kinds of ways that Astro can help with images. Either public images, that would be images right here, or images that are remote on another server. So let's start with public images since that will be the easiest to work with. So what I can do is actually take the image like this and here I can pass the source and I can do the same thing we had just a second ago. So I can reference Astro icon, for instance, dot PNG. And then let's give this an alt. We'll just say Astro icon. Now, anything that is not in your source directory, you have to provide two things, a width and a height. So if I come over here, I've got to provide a width and a height for this. So it looks like we're 698 by 740. So let's go ahead and add those in. So I'll say width 698, height is 740. Now notice all of my IntelliSense tells me we're just fine. If I come over here, you're going to see that we do have this image inside here. Now notice it has not done anything to transform the image, but it has done a couple things just to make it a little bit of a better experience. It's passed along the width and the height, so that means that it won't like shift as things load in, and that's something it does automatically when it's transforming the image. But even on remote images or images that are just statically built, you can provide those. In fact, you have to with the image component, and then it won't get layout shift like a normal image would. It also adds those two other attributes we already talked about. So that's one way to reference other images that Astro isn't going to optimize, but it will improve the experience for those coming to your site. The other thing you can do is take remote images. So let's come over here and let's just come to the Astro blog. I'm going to copy this image address and let's do the same thing. I'm going to come inside here. We're just going to drop this entire image directly in here. Now this happens to be a WebP. And if I were to come over here and inspect this image size, we have 579 by 248. So let's go ahead and do that same thing. So if I save this and come back over here, this should be pulling this image in right here. Now this works fine in dev mode, but in order for this to actually work when you come to your site, you do need to provide some additional items. So you'll see down here, I actually have to provide domains that I'm allowed to basically work with. And the reason you do this is for security reasons. So let me come over here to my Astro config. And inside here, we're just going to add an image object, and here we'll have domains astro.build. All right, so what does that do? Well, if I come back over here and we look at this image right here, you'll notice that it's done the same thing it did for our public images. It Because we had to set a width and a height, now there won't be cumulative layout shift, but it's also added those two attributes of loading equals lazy and decoding equals async. So let's recap the use of image. If they're in your source directory, Astro will actually compress them. You can even pass along a format, a quality, and it will do that and add a bunch of cool attributes to make your images way faster. It compresses them as we've already seen. We took our image from, I don't remember even what that was, 300 and something kilobytes down to 25 and then now down to 7.4. So all this happened because of this right here because we have assets that live in our source directory. Now you can reference public images, either public images in the root of your site that are not touched by Astro, and you can also reference remote images and pass those along to Astro's image component. But the only trick here is you have to add a width and a height, and that prevents the layout shift, but it'll add a couple of those other attributes for you. So those are kind of the three different types of images that the image component can take. Now, before we move on to the other tool that Astro gives us, let's look at how you would use this in a markdown file. So here I've got this content right over here. I've got a config using content collections. That's not super important. The important thing here is that I've got a markdown file here and a relative image over this way. Now this is in part to show you that you don't have to necessarily put all your images in your assets folder. That's what they recommend. But for things like blogs, it actually might make sense to just leave them relative. So they're actually right next to the post themselves. But you can see here I've got a cover and an alt, and then I've got Astra 3 is out right here. And just to make this easy, I've added a slash post that shows everything down this way. So as I add extra stuff and I save, you'll see it comes in that way. Now, obviously this is a markdown file, so I can't include components. If this was an MDX file, I could include a component just like I do in Astro files. And you can use that image Astro component in the same way in MDX files. Here, I'm just going to reference this like I would any other markdown image. So I could say like uh, Astro 3 uh, is out or something like that. And then I'm going to relatively reference this here now, if I save it, you'll notice it pops in over this way. But what you may not know is that Astro actually does all that transformation automatically because it's in my source directory. I don't have to have an image component. It just does it automatically in Markdown files. Now, you don't get the control of passing in like a format and all that kind of stuff, but you can see how easy it is to reference this. You have to do no work. 
Now, one quick note, when I come over here to the config.ts, you'll notice that I've actually passed in an image here as an argument. And this is a function I get back where I can actually come in here if I want to and refine it and tell it like it has to be this big or this wide. And I'll let you check out the documentation for that. But this tells it that it's an actual image type. And that way, when I get my post over here, I'm actually pointing to a real image and it's going to check that it's actually an image itself. It's not just a string. Now, where would that be helpful? Well, if I were to come over here to like my post right here, and I'm pulling in all of this just as a single entry. But let's say I came in here and I wanted to reference this using the image component. So I'll go ahead and import that. I need a source right here. And because I've used Zod to verify that this is an actual image, I can come in here and say post.data.cover, and it should work just fine. I can come in here with alt and do the same thing. Post.data.coveralt. And if I save it and come up here, you'll notice that that image is coming up top. And if I come over here, you can see it's actually done all that same kind of stuff, but I can now come in here and pass in like format, uh, AVIF or something like that. And it'll actually change the format for this top one up here. Again, just to show you that down this way, that format AVIF is different. So you would use this if you're like looping through your images and showing them as cards on your homepage or something like that. So we've looked at the Astro image component, both in normal Astro files and also in Markdown files. Now, just a reminder that the image component works the same way in MDX files as it does in Astro files. You cannot actually use an image component because it's an Astro thing inside of other frameworks, but you could pass it in as a slot. And if you're interested in that, they give you just like a detail here in the docs. Somewhere down below here, I'll let you figure it out. Okay, so like I mentioned, there are actually two tools that we get from Astro, the image component and also the get image function. So let's talk about that get image function. I come over here to the index.astro and we're going to pull in up top here, not just image, but also get image. Now what this is going to allow us to do is to basically transform the image in server side code. The image component only works in the body of a component. The get image function only works in the server side section up here in the front matter of an Astro component. You can also obviously write this in like JavaScript files or TypeScript files or MDX files as well. Because as far as Astro is concerned, obviously those are all server side code things that will be run on build. So let's go ahead and grab an optimized image. That's what we're going to store this in from get image. Now this takes in an object and it takes in essentially all the same things as the image component. So I have an SRC. This is going to point to my Astro image. That's this right up here, just like the same thing I passed in down this way, or I guess uh, down this way right here. I can also pass in things like a format. And again, I could say AVIF. The only thing you can't pass in is an alt because that's just a string you're going to add after the fact. So now if I grab this, let's go ahead and just console log this below. And then let's go ahead and open up the server. And as I refresh, I guess over this way, I should have remembered that you have to await this like this. All right, now if I come over here and refresh, and I think I just noticed another problem, and that is that we're on the post route and not on the homepage. So let's come back over here. But now I'll open this up and you'll see that there we go, we get everything back. Now this get image function returns several things. It returns an, a raw options property in the object that it gives back, and options, which is the things that you passed in, and then the SRC and other attributes as well. How would you actually use this? Well, you could come inside here and add something like style equals, and let's use backticks here. And then we're gonna say background image is URL. And then right inside here, we're gonna add some JavaScript where we'll just reference the optimized image dot SRC. Remember, that's the source it returns to us. So now if I save this, it won't look great, but you see we've got that background image right there, and that's an optimized background image. As you can see over this way, it's even AVIF because that's the format I said I want it. So that's how you would actually use this if you were going to like write a function for a single item. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how you might set up a more responsive image. It's one thing that I would, would have loved for them to sneak out in this 3.0 release. I think it is coming soon according to the team, and that is a picture element and more responsive images. All right, so what we need to do is come over here to the components. We're going to create another component here called responsive image.astro. And I'm just going to paste this in and just talk you through it because I don't want to take the time to write it out. I'm really just showing you what you could do, and there's ways that you could definitely improve this. What you're going to see is that we're going to pass in four things. We'll pass in a source. That's an actual image. We'll pass in different sizes. Those are numbers that we want these images to be at. We'll pass in a format that can be any of the formats that the get image function can take. And then we'll pass in an alt that we'll use to render our final thing. Then what we're going to do is await this function that we're going to write up top. We'll pass it the sources, the sizes, and the format. Now up here, what we'll do is take all of those. And I've just omitted this. This is TypeScript. You don't have to necessarily know TypeScript to follow along here. But what we're going to do is then take all these and map through them. 
So as we loop through them, we'll pass each of these to the get image function with the source, whatever the individual size is during that loop, and the format that we passed in. Then we'll return a string here that basically includes the new rendered SRC, and then also the width that we passed in to start with, along with this little W right here. I guess we could have also just done this as size. That would work as well, because it's this right here. All right, then what we're going to do is we've got kind of an array of all these strings. We're also going to get the largest one, whatever the sizes are that we've passed in, and that will kind of be our fallback default if for some reason the browser can't handle these different ones. Most browsers can do that now and have been able to for a long time, but what you'll see then is then we're returning an object with two different properties, that array of strings, and then also the source itself, the image kind of fallback. So we'll get all that back and just destructure those here, and we're just going to insert them inside of this image tag. So I've got this SRC set, and we're going to loop through the different things I get back here and just join that array on a comma. Then we'll have the alt, and the alt itself will just be whatever alt we originally passed in, and we'll also have the source. Now, you probably also want to spread in like a rest property and other stuff, but again, I'm just showing you kind of a quick way to do this, and you can enhance upon this yourself. So how would we actually use it, and what would be the benefit? Well, if I come back over this way, let's go ahead and let's kill all of these just so that we're not having to compete with these when I want to show you what I want to show you here in a second. Uh, actually, maybe I'll just copy this down so that you can see both in the finished code and remember what the optimized image is, but I do want to take this and remove it. Okay, so we've got no images on here now. And in fact, if I come over here and we load the network tab and we reload, you should see no images. Okay, perfect. So what I want to do is now call my responsive image like that. We're going to pass in the source. This will just be our astro image. That's the same image we've been using. We've got that sizes that we can pass in. This is an array of numbers. So let's do like 400, I don't know, 700 and 900. We've got the alt. We'll just say like uh, astro image. And by the way, if you don't want an alt to read, just leave it like this, uh, either here or with the image tag. And that tells screen readers, hey, this is not something you need to read out. But let's say it's an astro image. And then finally, we can pass in, what was it, format, I think. And this can be any of the formats that are available to us in the Astro image. Let's do AVIF. Now, we're going to go ahead and do that, and it's going to load it. But what I want to do is show you exactly how this works kind of behind the scenes. So let's close this down. We'll make it smaller and go 100% here. So if I reload this, you're going to see that here's the image we get back. It's a width of 700. Now, if I get a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, you're going to see that I get another image. In other words, the browser is smart enough to basically choose from that list of source set images to load in just the one that's the right size for the browser that we're currently viewing. Now you can of course adjust this as you need and kind of move it around and change that function as you need. But just to show you, you can actually come up with your own responsive images fairly easy and just kind of this little tiny function does all this work for us. Now you can do the same thing with the picture element if you want and kind of output that. So even though it hasn't yet come, I think there's some complexities when you have to deal with all these different projects that are using Astro. So they want to make sure they get it right and I respect that. But in the meantime, it's not that hard to roll your own if you just have basic needs like I do here. Now, if you're interested in that code, you can grab it in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Well, I hope this was a big help in understanding how Astro optimizes images for you. One more quick note, I am working on an Astro course. And if you want to check that out, it's at learnastro.dev. I've been building Astro sites since the early betas, and I'm excited to share that with you all in a format that I can actually update as Astro updates as well. If you're interested in it and you want to get 50% off at launch, sign up at the link in the description below. And as I release it as early access, you'll get it early as well. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.